everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Hey everybody, welcome back to Giga Texas. It's Friday, the 6th of October, 2023. And it's been a very busy week here as they've been preparing for production to ramp back up. And there's been some changes going on, uh, final changes inside for the production processes of Giga Texas. And I think it's a lot of uh, exciting changes and a lot of developments that are going on that most people don't appreciate because they just want to see the final product. They want to see a shiny cyber truck and then that's all that they think that matters. But there's quite a bit more that's going on that is very important. And one of those things is what I'm going to show you just uh, in a second. And this has to do with cyber trucks, but not a whole bunch of brand new shiny ones in the outbound lot that makes great splashy headlines. But more importantly, as you see by these images, there are hundreds of castings for the Cybertruck on the east side of the building today, both fronts and rears. Now, this is a great sign because obviously without these, they can't build Cybertrucks. It's also a great sign because they wouldn't be building this many of these castings if they weren't ready to start into production for the Cybertrucks. Now, I know that this uh, may be disappointing to some people because this isn't a shiny stainless steel Cybertruck, but for people who really do understand what's going on, this is an incredibly great sign, and I'm glad to be able to share that with you today. Speaking of production, if we go over to the testing and calibration lot, we can see quite a few Model Ys still being produced, being uh, staged here, final checks, and then moved over to the outbound lot, which as you can see here is got some model wise there have been trucks picking them up and departing off the site but it's not quite as busy as uh, we'll probably see next week once the ramp continues to uh, progress and uh, i'll be showing you that next week when we get into uh, those videos so otherwise uh, we're gonna have a lot more to talk about within the video today and uh, we'll uh, just get right to the video instead of doing a lot of big introduction uh, I think the most important thing was the castings that we just talked about. So without further ado, let's get in the drone, let's fly around the site, let's take a look at how Giga Texas looks today. And as always, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great weekend. Take care. If you would like to support my efforts, please consider using these links, which will be in the video description. If you are interested in Tesla products, you can help yourself and support me by using my referral code. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons on my YouTube video as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. Good morning from the southwest side of Giga Texas today. I thought we would start on this side of the highway just to give kind of a higher level view of all of the activity that is going on with the construction on this side of the highway. Now, most of you that have been following my videos for quite some time know that this entire area is permitted and it's discussed as the West Support Facility. And you can see the West Warehouse on Wheels on the right, a lot more of the grade work uh, where all the water is pooling right now because of the recent rains. The central road that is being developed and heading all the way up to the north to connect River Road here on the south to Tesla Road on the north. The large staging area for materials, which continues to grow. And then this parking lot, which is for all of the contractors that are working on the construction of Giga Texas. And then this clearing, which uh, continues to see dirt removed for the grade work on the right-hand side of the screen and also just leveling its grade out by removing hills and ponds that are part of the old sand and gravel mine. Now, as I bring the drone down here, you can see that the central road is getting most of its concrete uh, curbs for the medians completed. There's also pipe work that is being installed and you can tell right in the middle of the screen, I think those are actually conduits, which will be for lighting. You can also tell that there are uh, water management pipes being put in on the uh, side of the road. 
And then as I bring the drone down here, you can tell the entire graded section here completes the distance between the warehouse and wheels on the bottom left and the new end of line and outbound lot. Also on the left of the screen, you can get a nice sense of how the grade is much higher where they've finished the work here than it was in the original graded area for the warehouse and wheels. So we'll probably see that change over time. Now here in the outbound lot, the central uh, trenching for all of the pipes uh, continues to see a progress. Some more of the steel and other items being stored ready for the uh, assembly into the end of line building. You can also see a lot of that water standing again for a lot of the rain that has just recently uh, came through the area. And then here is a good high altitude view looking down onto the end of line structure. And you can tell that the priority right now is to complete the roof. And the blue is sort of a liner. They'll put that uh, insulation and then the roof decking will proceed on top of that. And they're about uh, three fourths of the way through at least the current steel structure as it exists right now. And you can see more steel pipes and uh, parts are being stored on the now completed ground slab. And as you can tell, it's uh, all the way to the south end now. It's all been poured, cross cut, and is in the final curing. And then we'll see more of the steel assembled towards the south. I'll bring the drone down a little lower. It gives you kind of a view inside of what this uh, facility looks like and how large it is with a lot of open space and not very many columns, which will be really great for doing the uh, work on the vehicles, doing the final checkouts, calibration. And also, as we've discussed on several videos with the permit, there will be some small repairs done to some of the vehicles ahead of the uh, delivery as well. Now here at the bottom of the screen, we see crews are preparing a lot of conduit. This is for a uh, uh, electrical conduit and wiring system. I think this is all being done in preparation of going underneath the highway where we've seen the horizontal drilling. And as I pull away, not only do we get a chance to see the end of line facility, but the horizontal drilling operation that is continuing right here at the middle bottom of the screen. And there'll be electrical conduit going underneath the road and that HDPE treated pipe. This is the outlet for that horizontal drilling we talked about. Uh, it's got this blue fence around. You can see the bore as it exists right now, and there's still some water in that to hole. I do expect to see more of that drilling to prepare for the conduit. We also see the temporary end of line here. Some of the Model Ys have just come out of the factory. See those two ramps, both of them are now operational. You can also see some lighting on the inside. That's where they do the final uh, checkouts of the vehicles before they exit the factory and then they move over to the east side. The west main entrance uh, looks like it's pretty much completed. I haven't seen any real changes over the last uh, week or two. So I think that uh, they're pretty happy with the way it looks right now. And also on the left hand side of the screen, you notice that there's a lot of cars being parked. There's not a whole lot of materials anymore. Uh, although there are some being delivered as you can see by the truck here and some of these uh, white painted, uh, looks like beams. Uh, most of those are for more assembly lines, but the majority of the items, the robots, the platforms and other equipment has been moved inside and is in final assembly right now. And that's yet another great sign for production as we see that ramp continuing. And moving further to the south, we see that CFA pile drilling going on on the left. A lot of the construction and the preparation for the extension of the building. And we'll see that a little closer uh, view in a second. But I wanted to show you some of the development here just by the south bridge. You can see that depression with that pipe. It looks like there's some erosion. There's also some guy wise wires nearby. That's where we've seen a permit asking for help from Austin Energy so that they can do some repair work. We also see windows that are underneath the south bridge for storage right now. And those windows were what were removed from the building when they uh, were preparing for all those yellow wall panels. And speaking of which, uh, you can see how they're continuing to do work on those yellow wall panels and also that extension of the stamping too. And we also get a chance to see why it was so important to put the paving down on the road because of all of this mud and all the water from all the recent rains. And the CFA pile drilling, it looks like it's on hold for the moment, trying to get this dried out. Now, as I approach the far south end of the building, you can see the 
platforms, the work on preparing these yellow panels so they get a exterior uh, finishing coat, uh, very similar to what we see on the top of the uh, loading platform area where you see that uh, roll-up door. Those panels around are actually temporary. They are not concrete, and they're similar to what we see with the yellow. So we'll probably see something similar on this entire expansion uh, section of Stamping 2 once they are completed. But you can tell that workers uh, continue to prepare that wall for that uh, final treatment. So it will appear very similar to what you see there with that uh, upper level door, uh, kind of gray looking almost like uh, the concrete panels, but, uh, but they're not. It's a good view of the south end with all the standing water, but we also see more work being done on the north side of the cyber pond. Uh, again, you can get a good sense of why that paving was done because of all of this mud. And then here where we saw the uh, rebar cages and uh, other materials for the footings moved away, there's that section where the median has been removed on River Road on the right-hand side of the screen. And there's speculation that they're going to have a drive-in path from that road into this south construction area. And those are the rebar and the rebar cages for the footings on the right-hand side of the screen. As I proceed back towards the southeast corner, you can tell that crews are doing some rework on the blue panels that replace the windows. And I'm not exactly sure what uh, the point is, but it looks like they're all being done at the seams of all the concrete uh, panels. So there may be some relation to that. Also, another interesting delivery is two more of these very large tanks have been delivered. Now we're up to six and we see the white platform items around. I think those are all associated with those tanks and uh, some other equipment has been delivered too, just underneath the power lines. But what all this is and where it's gonna go in the factory, I'm still not sure. As I pull up uh, over the power lines and back to the Southeast, I wanna just give you a good view from a bird's eye view of the South End and how it is uh, progressing right now and what it looks like. Again, with the River Road on the left, the construction site for the extension in the middle, and then River Road uh, kind of branching to the north and where they're doing some work on that last segment of concrete to connect those roads. As we fly over this uh, pond and the green belt, I want to give you a good view of the multi-level parking garage construction site. What we see is GeoPier work continues on the west side, working to the east, gravel and geotextile membranes being installed kind of in the perimeter of that rectangular section. Another section, a smaller rectangular area that uh, has previously been prepared. Of course, the water management uh, channels and the riprap and those broken up rock in the middle of those. And then what appears to be eventually a road that goes from the left to the right along this side of the uh, construction site. So it'll be uh, good to see how this continues to progress. As I continue to fly more towards the north to kind of reveal this entire area, what we can see is those trailers and the cars, those uh, vehicles parked are part of the construction process for that side. We also see here that underground manifold has uh, gotten some more concrete where the pipes come out. They finished the, the gravel and the dirt to fill in, and then they're doing some more form work on that uh, uh, edge of the uh, other end of those pipes for more concrete. As we approach the testing and calibration lot, uh, one of the things that's very noticeable is just how many Model Ys are here, and they're overflowing into the drive spaces in between the parking lots. Um, but we are not seeing the full ramp yet of the Model Ys, I think that will be coming sometime next week, as I mentioned in the intro. Uh, but pretty soon we'll start seeing these vehicles being relocated over to the outbound lot in the upper right-hand side of the screen. And then more of those trucks will be picking them up. But this is a good lower-end view of uh, uh, the Model Ys that are st stocked over here and uh, how this entire testing and calibration lot looks today. Of course, the water detention pond is full because of those rains that I mentioned. And then here's a good view of the outbound lot. Again, there are Model Ys now on both sides, so they're starting to increase, and we see some of the trucks picking them up and delivering them uh, probably to the railhead up at Taylor, uh, about 15 miles to the north, and that's where many of them are picked up by the rail cars and transported to around the country. Here at the east 
secondary entrance, you can see the uh, plastic on the windows and the stain work has now passed almost the entire uh, triangular section of that uh, entryway. This uh, area with the uh, concrete removed, we see that the uh, receiving door platforms have been completed. We're waiting for the load levelers and then that uh, concrete to be replaced. This is important. This is that uh, conduit that connects up to the new electrical switchyard and the factory. Looks like they're putting the concrete on top of the conduit, which is uh, one of the finishing points uh, which we're looking for. And then here is the big news story of the day. This is hundreds of Cybertruck castings that are being arrayed here on the outside. Now, I've had some people on X try to claim that they think these are all just for recycling and that uh, Tesla isn't really making these for vehicles. That's a bunch of nonsense. And whoever is saying that, uh, they have no idea what they're talking about. These are freshly made Cybertruck castings there's both front and rears. You can see some of the flashing still on it. That means that there's still some milling that needs to be done on these particular uh, Cybertruck castings, but you can also see that uh, some of them are in the white rack mounts as well as the ones on the ground. I've also had some people ask, why are these stored outside? Doesn't it make sense to put them on the inside? Well, as we've been talking for several years now, the castings are so large, they take up so much space, it would be very inefficient to try to put them in the inside of the factory. So they use the outside staging areas such as this. That's what those rack mounts are for. Also, Giga Texas is not unique in this. If you look at Giga Berlin and Fremont, um, also over at Shanghai, you'll see that they have the castings on the outside of the factory for the exact same reasons. So anyway, that's a good look at those uh, castings here on the east side. And uh, the implications are that Cybertruck production for deliveries is getting much closer now. We popped up onto the roof. I wanted to show you the uh, work that's going on with the uh, crews and those ducted fans. This is another important part that's going on inside the casting machine structure as we've talked at length on several videos. Elite Refractory Services, as you can see by the trailer on the left-hand side of the screen, has been installing uh, several furnaces on the inside. That is to melt down the scrap aluminum uh, and you reuse that for the castings. And uh, that uh, those ducted fans go along with the vented uh, panels instead of the windows on the left side for ventilation. There's also some interesting uh, wooden crate deliveries here on the northeast side. And then as we wrap around to the north part of the factory, we can see these body mounts. These are kind of racks that move the uh, bodies and whites around. Also, we see these, uh, again, it looks like molds for bumpers, but there are some people that don't like that. They want it to be something else. So I will let you figure out what those are, but uh, you could see uh, how they appeared in the image. We also see many deliveries of drywall especially to this particular section, in addition to large crates and also more of the steel beams and the HVAC components. As I've mentioned several times, uh, the construction is going on inside this portion of the factory uh, to increase and enhance the 4680 production capabilities that Giga Texas has. So that seems to be progressing quite well. A lot of details here at the Megapack site I want to point out. Uh, the perimeter fence continues to be expanded and extended around the north end. Looks to me like all of the wiring or virtually all of it for the Megapacks and their transformers are completed now. The work here for more of the wire connections and connecting that uh, gray uh, trailer control room looks like most of those electrical connections are done. Pretty much all of the work here on the circuit breakers, transformers, and other uh, equipment it looks to be completed. You can see how that perimeter fence is now wrapping around most of the north end, just has that east side that needs to be completed. And then overall, how this entire site looks. Also on the north part of that site, going through trenches next to these trees and under the power lines, uh, all of the conduit has been uh, installed and crews are getting ready to uh, route the wires, which you can see in these three very large spools with the blue. 
Uh, those will go through the conduits around this area to the south to that north part of the Megapack site. And then this is a good view of some work that's going on here on the east side of the electrical switchyard itself. It looks like some of that is related to the concrete batch plant just to the north uh, of the screen. And then here on the south side of the switchyard, the big news is that crews continue to install more of the cabling through the conduit. You can see that on the left. Uh, also, the work here to finish up the underground vault and the two white control trailers. Also, on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see the wires that have been routed but not connected for one of two of the transformers. The other one is completed, and the transformer is power in Giga Texas. And, of course, here's a good view of all of this area with the Megapack site in the background so you can get a good idea of where all this is located. So I'm going to reposition the drone up to the north side of the battery cathode plant, and we'll resume the uh, narration from that point. The aftermath of all the rains is pretty evident here. We can see all of the standing water, but that's still not uh, deterring the crews from working here on the north end of the battery cathode plant and also on the east side as well. But this is a good view of just how much uh, mud is uh, starting to show up now that we're entering the rainy season. As we proceed around the east side of the factory uh, here, there's a lot of different things that I wanna show you. There's some standing water in the wade pit, that's just from the rains, it's not being used. Also, uh, we have four cyber trucks now here at the crash test facility and also two, uh, I think Model Ys, uh, one of them for sure under those car covers. You saw one of the Model Ys in the cyber truck uh, there. And then here we see two more cyber trucks, uh, both covered. I don't think that these have been crash tested, but uh, they may be preparing for that crash testing in the near future. Uh, but this is a good view of how the uh, covered cyber trucks uh, look. And uh, yes, even though they have covers, I'm pretty sure they are cyber trucks. Um, but anyway, as I bring the drone back up here, you can see another cyber truck on the left of the screen, and that has been here for quite some time. We also get a good view here inside the north end of the crash test lab. We have the rotisserie on the right. We can see some of the vehicle lifts. There's a vehicle of some sort in getting ready for testing, and it looks like there's a, a worker preparing the pool cable possibly for another test to resume. As I fly along the east side again, there's a good view of that cyber truck undercover and also some of the work going on on the south end between the control room and the crash test facility. You can see those concrete barriers being added. They've added these and they've also added a, a curtain to be put down here when they're doing the um, trash, crash testings to prevent uh, items and debris from exiting the south end of the building. And here you can clearly see that that temporary curtain has been rolled up and is being held up on the top right now. They're not doing any testing. The crash test wall and uh, clearly this curtain was put up for the purposes of crash testing and no other purposes. Uh, I know that there's been some of my YouTube uh, viewers speculating why the, current, uh, the curtain was put up there and all of their speculations were incorrect. This is just uh, for debris uh, mitigation. On the side of the ca cathode machine section, we can see a truck bringing concrete panels and other concrete panels being installed to fill out this, what used to be that large opening. And that's where those three seven-story tall platforms and equipment were moved inside. Now it looks like that is being sealed off. A lot more equipment on the right-hand side uh, of the screen. Uh, waiting for installation looks like pipes and some other scaffolding items. And then here on the south side, I'll give you a good view inside. You can see the pneumatic blenders. It looks like there's some red ra ra railing that has been put uh, uh, temporarily on the side. We can see some white, uh, possibly small columns. And then here is what the uh, right-hand side of the building looks like. It looks like there's somebody taking a nap on uh, some of those columns as well. As I pull away, I'll give you a good view of the die shop on the left and how it looks right now. All the windows in the upper left have been installed now, and we're just waiting for the windows and the doors on this bottom right-hand side where the entrance will be to uh, have those arrive and be installed. See a lot of the standing water here in the alleyway, and that's delaying some of the 
work to prepare that grade for asphalt or concrete. And then here, the nitrogen uh, vaporization system on the right-hand side of the screen, also the chiller unit. And then on the left, we can see that underground conduit uh, trench uh, being prepared for eventually pipes to go across underneath the road and then over to connect to this site. And this is a good view of some of the work that's going on on that roof section of that chiller plant. As we proceed to the north, uh, we'll cover over some of the area that has all of that rainwater, as I mentioned. We see quite a few of these green and blue pipes have been delivered and they're being prepared for uh, installation. Uh, also, we can see those concrete vaults, the square or rectangular ones and the round ones. That's where the lift station is permitted for installation. And uh, this is a good view also of the entire west side and how it continues to transform Less and less of those stainless, uh, those uh, steel corrugated pipes on the right as they continue to be installed. We also see some other equipment as well. Now the berm here is being continually widened even more towards the Martin Marietta batch plant. And then here is kind of a cutout on that berm. It's most likely related to the stormwater pipe that they are installing, uh, as you can see here with some of the trench boxes, the trenches and going underneath this section. But it's interesting to see how much they continue to encroach into that Martin Marietta site. As I mentioned, the glass has been installed. Looks like there's some last minute adjustment going on here on this west side of the dye shop. And you can also see the uh, workshop here uh, that they do a lot of the fabrication as well. I did notice that there was these deliveries of large crates on these trucks. Now, just because they're here doesn't mean that they're going to go into this particular part of the site. I think these are destined to go over at the 4680 production portion of the factory. They're just being staged here or they just arrived. But it's very interesting to see even more equipment continues to be delivered and installed while production is beginning to ramp back up and Cybertruck production is getting closer and closer. So as I bring the drone up, I'll give you kind of a good view over the entire site today, starting with the dye shop and cathode building. On the right, you can see the mega pack and the electrical switch yard. See the overflow lot, the east warehouse on wheels, all the contractor trailers and staging areas, the main factory, the east parking lot, and also the outbound lot and uh, where that multi-level parking garage is going to be built on the left hand side. As always, thank you very much for watching. I do very much appreciate it and I hope you have a great weekend. Take care.